This is a first look video to give you a little idea on how to graph piecewise functions. Now I'm going to show you two ways to graph them and you can pick whichever way you like better. So if we look at this first problem we're going to do here, this is actually from number four from the first night of piecewise function homework. You can see we have two pieces to the graph. We have the absolute value function 3 times the absolute value of x plus 2 for x values that are less than or equal to negative 1. And we have negative 5x minus 2 if you're going to use an x value that's bigger than negative 1. So one way to graph this is just to graph these two entire graphs and then we'll figure out what pieces we're actually using. So I'm going to use my normal transformations to graph the absolute value function. And the linear function below it is just a line, so I have a few different options of how I can graph it. I could just use the slope and y-intercept, or I could make a table of values, or I could even transform the parent function for that, whose parent points are 0, 0, and 1, 1. So I've done basically all three on the right there. I've gone and graphed the absolute value function in blue and the linear function in red. Now what I have to figure out is where does the break happen in this graph? And if we look at the domain restrictions, it's at negative 1. So I put a line there to remind me that is where the break in this graph will happen. We're only supposed to use the absolute value function for x values less than or equal to negative 1. So that blue graph is only going to stay to the left of that yellow line. And for the linear functions, we're only supposed to use it for x values that are greater than negative 1. So we'll only use the linear function to the right of that line. So we need to remove the two parts of this graph that don't belong in the final graph. I can see now what the final graph is going to look like. It looks like it's a lightning bolt. And the last thing I need to do then is erase the parts of the graph that don't belong. And this is what my final graph looks like. The last step in graphing this is to clean up the boundary line at negative 1 to make sure that we have a nice sharp cutoff point for each piece of the function. To do that, you just plug the boundary number into each function. So we plug negative 1 into the absolute value function, the output is 3. When we go to graph that point, we make it a closed circle because negative 1 is included in the domain for the absolute value function. You can see that it's or equal to negative 1, that's why it's a closed circle. Plug negative 1 into the linear function and it comes out 3 and we're going to graph that with an open circle because negative 1 is not actually in the domain of the linear function and we represent that with the open circle. But something interesting happens on this function in that the two points are exactly the same. So when we go to graph them, the closed circle really fills in the open circle and there's a nice clean break there in this graph which gives it its lightning bolt shape.